Hello everyone and welcome to this Blender tutorial video. In this video we're making a radiator in Blender 2.82a or 2.82.7 depending on what you want to call it. So this is a easy enough thing and you can get pretty nice looking pretty nice looking sorry pretty nice looking results as you can see with minimal effort. This is just because of the um uh <laughs> sorry hdr okay so anyway control n general and then for once leave the default cube in press s y 0.3 s and x uh, actually just s z 1.8 tab 3 select this face e and press s to 0 0.8 press g and y and hold control and shift then press Control R to put a loop down the middle. Enable transparency and plot uh, up here, and press in the pad three. Then press one on your keyboard and select these by pressing B and do delete vertices. Click on the wrench and do add modifier mirror. Change the axis to Y. Turn off the X axis and hit apply. Add modifier subdivision surface. Tab Control R slide 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 out not all the way in fact press ctrl r ctrl b and do 0.75 on your keyboard so like that actually going to go up a little bit and then just click once like that then i'm going to make this bit here a bit less steep so just select it on both sides on uh here and down here by holding it alt and shift then sz like so press uh, this numpad 3 again just delete all the vertices on the side by pressing b and then just add the mirror modifier again y-axis like that and then just press sy 0.7 just move it up to like this sy again there we go. Now I'm going to just press 3 and move this out a little bit more. Like this. Actually, hang on. Uh, I'm not going to. This is actually fine. So I'm going to scale it in a tiny bit more by 0 0.8. Then hit apply and apply. Then add modifier array. Set it to 0, 1.2 enter and then change it to about 13. Actually I'll go for a value of about this. I'm going to scale this in to 0 0.8 to make it look fit better. There we go. See it looks all right. Then just simply hit apply. Then add modifier, remesh, smooth. Once you've done this go ahead and press add modifier, smooth, not character smooth, smooth. And you can change the factor to smooth the edges. Go, I'm going to go for full, like 10, set it to repeat to 1 to smooth it a lot. Hit apply. Next, go ahead, press tab. And already it's basically done it, but I don't know why. But I was going to say it's enabled transparency up here. Press on pad 1. And just basically press B about here and just select all these vertices in the middle. Like that. I'm holding I press C and middle click to deselect or just yeah. Then do delete faces. Uh before you do that, actually not don't delete, do d dissolve faces or dissolve vertices rather. Okay, that doesn't work. Yeah, just go ahead and delete faces. Press uh next select uh click on select and do all wide trait non manifold. Press Shift S, because they're selected. Shift A, a tab, Shift A, mesh, cylinder. Select, Shift S, because selected, Shift S, selection. So, selecting this, Shift S, because they're selected, cylinder, Shift S, selection to cursor. S, Shift Z, um, like 0.1. 
it's just started being very windy outside. It's just very windy outside. Press S and Z. I'm going to go into material view to make this a bit easier. So you can just click up here. So just S and Z up to the top. Now add modifier, subdivide, to tab, control R, just slide it all the way up twice. Like that. Hit S and I'm going to do shift Z and I'm going to skirt up a tiny bit like that. Then hit apply. So we have this and then add modifier array 0 1.15 okay just move it a bit 1.75 and then just change it to the end part press numpad 7 to make sure it's all in the center it needs to go up a tiny tiny bit so i'm just going to do it like this I'll move it like 1.77 there you go then hit apply once you've done this if you go into rendered you should have something like this so i've done this a bit too much so select trait non-manifold s and x and just scale it in a bit so you shouldn't lose any quality of your mesh too much anyway there we go looks a bit better not too bad. So next, go ahead and just uh, press tab 3, select, press 7 on your numpad, numpad 9, to go to the bottom, and just select evenly. In fact, we don't have to do that because we've already got it selected here. So with this selected, shift S, cursor selected, shift A, mesh circle, add circle, fill type, end gone, S, and scale it in. First vertices, 64, then scale it down with S, G, Z, G, Z, just to move it down, G, Z again, tab, and then E, 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 S, without moving, so just E and then S, and move it down a tiny bit, S, if it doesn't look right, just scale it up with S, Shift, and Z. I'm actually going to scale mine in a bit. There we go. And then I'm going to move it up. Doesn't matter if it's in the mesh, you won't tell. So like that. I'm actually going to scale it a bit. There we go. Then click it. Do add modifier. Subdivision surface. Tab. Control R. Just drag it down. Oops, sorry. Control R. Drag it down. And then drag it almost all the way up, so I'm a bit laggy. And then do the same here, but this time just immediately right click. And at the top part, the same, drag it all the way up. So I'm going to do it like that. Okay, I'm also going to select this, move it down, so it's a bit, because it's lagging for me. Then I'm just going to skip a tiny bit, and there we go. Change it to 2, hit apply, grab it, press material tab, press new. Actually, before we do that, I might uh, just assign this the same material and this the same material. Then with this selected, open up a new window by putting your cursor by the options tab and clicking shader editor, press N to collapse that menu. Delete this and press shift A, shader, specular, plug it in. Change the base color down to a value of 0 0.7 uh, size here. So down here, 0 0.75 or a hex of BF, BF, BF. Clear code, full. And then you can literally leave it like that and it looks pretty good. I'm actually going to make it a bit brighter. You can also change the color of the specular value. And you can see that is doing stuff. It is very slight though. So you can increase or decrease the roughness. Also input ambient occlusion. So shift A input ambient occlusion. And just plug the AO into ambient occlusion. And you should see something. You can also do this. And then yeah you can see that is working. 
so if you were to change this down to black you can see the shadows will change colour on that side but where it's bright it does not so you can increase the distance I'm just going to plug that into there though it might not do anything I sh yeah sorry you do need to plug that into there that's what makes it work but the sample's on 32 and that's that but then select this thing down here the little leg press shift D Y hold control Ooh, press 2 uh, 3 4 5 4.5 in my case maybe a bit less then go ahead and s these should all have the same material assigned so you can change anything accordingly so if I'm actually going to delete this there you go okay so next I don't know why you'd want a mission but anyway collapse this window go to the world tab click color or the little dot next to color and do environment texture and press open now if you don't have a hdri there's a cool website hdryhaven.com okay so texture is loaded if i go into rendered you can see we have a nice hdri and our radio has a slight shine on it which mine has in real life so we also have this now these things down here click on the materials tab and press the two numbers uh in fact no sorry change this one here to material 001 and just change the base color down uh not that much to like so it's just a bit off and increase the roughness to a value of one like that now I'll press numpad zero position your camera i'm gonna go for like this go to the render settings tab and go to film and dis and enable transparency you can control the strength of your hdri i'm actually going to keep mine actually i'm going to go down to a 0.8 and that's about it now this will not work in the cycles engine as you can see because it uses the specular now you can do this alternatively if you go into shader editor and if you just change it to a gloss and change it to sharp shader mix plug this into the top shader glossy ggx into the bottom and what we're going to do is we're then i'll just show you so i'll just plug this into the surface so which one is the sharp so it's full zero it would be sharp full one is ggx set the value to a 0 0.9 put the roughness on both of them uh, on the sharp to a zero and this one to a 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 now if you go into rendered and if i assign this to you can actually now see down here that that is working uh the reason it looks like that is transparent glass is not enabled i don't know if that should uh, enable transparent glass and that should have gone i don't know why it's still there whatever so if you then did the same here so if i just change this to material zero one you can actually see that this will work so if i just quickly do control b zero rendered now you can change this or you can increase the roughness or you can decrease the roughness you can change the color now if you want to change the color my suggestion is shift a shader mix shader plug put the value uh change it to shift a shader diffuse plug it into there and change the value to lean slightly more towards the the diffuse now now you can see it looks a bit different if we go onto this side you can see it looks like that now this is a bit bright so i'm actually going to delete that <laughs> didn't realize plug that into there there you go you can see now that actually looks pretty good so that would be how you would set this up in cycles you can change the values low or high so i'd probably go for a 0.8 now i'll show you the two comparison renders but for the time being i'm going to plug that into here and i'm going to just go to 
change this one here to material, go to EV, and just making sure that everything is back to normal. Yep. And so is that. Okay. So I'll show you the two comparison renders. So I'll just go to render image, render one. Uh, if you want to add a floor, just go ahead and add a normal plane, scale it. Uh, scale, scale. I don't know why, but for some reason my blender decides to not swap screens anymore. Weirdly. Anyway, rendered GZ with that up. Render image. And there you go. Now I'll show you the comparison in cycles. So cycles. Then I'll just click on here. Open up the shader to and just change this to material 001. Plug that into here. And then this should be the same for everything apart from this. Material 001. And so I'll just show you the comparison. I'm going to set my render to 64. I am going to enable denoising data. Then I'm just going to make, yeah, I just set up to render image. Okay, so it's finished rendering. I'm just going to go to the compositing tab, use nodes, and just do filter the noise. Keep HDR enabled. Plug the noisy image into image. Normal to normal, albedo into albedo, and dungeon into image. And then, here you go. So here is the cycles, and here is the EV engine. Now you can adjust this to make it look a bit better. So for example, you could change the FA the roughness value on the glossy shader. Or you could add in like uh, input for now and change the IO, plug that into the FAC, change the IR, which is index of refraction. So you could have it to actually be a bit more of a metal. Personally though, because I like this because it's so easy to sell. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This only took 30 seconds to render, but this took not even a second, as you can see up here. Yeah. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.